All right, so uh, thanks for joining here. I'm just kind of getting started. Um, so as of right now, um, at least, there are no warnings across the state, which is uh, good so far, um, but kind of the window we were really looking at for uh, activity to be at its peak was uh, at 5 to 11 p.m. time frame. Uh, so we're kind of getting into that time now. Uh, you probably noticed over the last couple hours that it's gotten quite a bit warmer um, and the humidity has increased quite a bit. Um, and those strong southerly winds are kind of uh, pumping in some of that moisture from the south. Um, it was pretty dry this morning, but now some of that humidity is starting to push in. Uh, so looking at the radar real quick here, uh, two things that you really notice uh, first uh, right off the bat here is there's two rounds of uh, ongoing storms right now. I guess there kind of could be three if you want to be picky. Uh, there's this one uh, kind of general here across uh, northern Illinois and western Illinois um, and then there's the second one here that looks a little bit stronger across Iowa and that one was the round uh, that's the reason why we upgraded parts of western Illinois into a, a level four uh, for um, uh, our severe risk uh, because that second round uh, that we're expecting to move into western Illinois about uh, an hour and a half from now I would say is when it'll be near the Mississippi River um, and pushing in uh, that's when uh, that second round will <clears throat> um, push uh, into western Illinois and that's where we're kind of uh, more concerned about a tornado threat so far this first round has been very uh, not really uh, too impressive so far. Uh, there's been some lightning and thunder, but these have really just been general showers and storms so far, uh, as there really hasn't been a ton of instability uh, for these storms to work with uh, up to this point. Uh, let me turn on the hail tracks here. You can see if there's been... Uh, so the radar's not detecting any hail here. Uh, back here, though, with the second round, these uh, tr tracks here, these, uh, you know, kind of swiggly looking things, they're contours, uh, but those are... Uh, hail tracks detected by the radar. Uh, so we're not getting any of that with this first round here. Um, and then across northern Illinois, you can see here that we have uh, some showers starting to push in. Um, and then the closest uh, lightning here, some of these uh, storms down by Dwight are producing a little bit of lightning. Uh, but really not uh, anything of concern right now across uh, northern Illinois. I know a lot of people have been asking, um, you know, when we're really looking at uh, the main when we're looking at uh, the threat uh, for tonight, and uh, that time frame again is kind of uh, 5 to uh, midnight, really if you want to be specific, I guess, across uh, northeastern Illinois, uh, where we have a level 2 in place, I'll show our risk map in a second, but across the Chicago area, probably uh, 6 to 11 p.m. really, uh, but again, we've already had, uh, we already have a tornado watch in effect for west, or, yeah, for western Illinois here, northwestern Illinois. Um, and as this first round hasn't been too impressive so far, uh, it's strengthening still. The storms around Peoria up towards uh, north, uh, towards the Princeton area, have been showing signs of strengthening um, over the last hour. And, you know, these, uh, let's turn on uh, velocity here. Uh, not seeing any signs of rotation or anything right now. Um, and this first round, again, that we've seen so far um, is more of a wind and hail threat. Um, as it pushes northeast for uh, this line back here. Again, this stuff across uh, from DeKalb County over towards uh, Kendall County, um, across other parts of northern Illinois. That's just shower activity, really, for right now. Um, and that'll kind of act to kind of uh, moisten the uh, lower levels here uh, and kind of prime things for uh, this first round that'll come through. And then again, the second round that'll affect more western Illinois. By the time this round here gets uh, moves east of the I-39 corridor, we think it'll begin to weaken. Uh, that'll be after, you know, 10 o'clock by then, because uh, it's not moving super fast here. If I put this into motion, um, you can see how it's, you know, it's kind of moving off to the northeast here, uh, not super quick. Uh, and that'll really continue here over the next, you know, six hours or so until eventually it kind of dies out. Um, but again, this first round here is more of a wind and hail risk for any stronger storms. It's been very isolated so far. Uh, we really haven't seen any warnings here. Um, but there is, where we have seen a couple warnings here, is actually just north of St. Louis. You can see some of those hail tracks, uh, these circles here, and some hail reports. Um, things have kind of quieted down so far. Uh, the Storm Prediction, Prediction Center did issue a severe thunderstorm watch uh, for... Uh, large hail up to an inch and a half in diameter, uh, damaging winds and maybe even a tornado or two. Uh, but we're not seeing anything too strong right now. If I loop the radar, you can see it was a little stronger uh, 
storms were a little stronger when they first issued the watch about a half hour or so ago, uh, but now things have kind of uh, weakened a bit. But again, the biggest area of concern right now is are these storms here in the southeastern Iowa that are going to be coming over the river here. Uh, so if you're in the Quad Cities area, this is coming towards you. Uh, but right now we have a tornado warning in effect here. Again, this is west of the Mississippi River in uh, Iowa uh, for southern Henry County and southeastern Iowa. Um, Van Buren County in southeastern Iowa until 5. Um, nothing uh, spotted as of right now, it appears. It looks like this is just a, uh, you know, a radar-indicated warning. Let's see if we can match it with velocity here. Okay, so yeah, you can see there's a pretty good uh, couplet there. Uh, this is, again, looking on the right side. This is looking at velocity. So we have uh, that area of rotation right there and again this is moving towards the new london area uh, it's going to probably slide just east of mount pleasant but still mount pleasant is in this warning um, and again eventually this is going to drift continue to drift northeast uh, probably towards the quad cities area davenport um, maybe alito um, over the next one to two hours here so we're going to have to watch this line very closely here um, as it enters western illinois and again that is really our main uh, concern at the moment. We have, you know, general thunderstorms across parts of northern Illinois, parts of central Illinois, even southern Illinois. Uh, nothing severe right now, um, but this, you know, second line here is uh, what we're most concerned about, and again, this is expected to enter western Illinois here into the uh, probably 5 to 6 p.m. time frame, um, and then eventually push eastward before it weakens uh, before midnight. Uh, but again, across northern Illinois here, we have some showers, so you're probably hearing some rain in some places. Um, if I switch radars here, again, not seeing um, really any lightning activity now across northern Illinois. Um, that instability has kind of been slow to catch up. Um, but there has have been some very gusty winds uh, reported here across the state over the last few hours as uh, pressure has dropped pretty significantly as the system approaches. And actually across central Illinois, we've had some reports of uh, dust, uh, blowing dust, and there was a dust storm warning in effect for a time uh, for just west of Springfield. You can see here that I-72 is, or was, I'm not sure if it still is, uh, shut down between uh, mile markers 80 and 87. Uh, and then we have another report here of blowing dust. Uh, Oh, that was just some. Uh, and then another, somebody else reported more blowing dust. So anywhere really across central Illinois, uh, now hopefully some of that rain has moved over those areas and kind of worked to uh, moist or dampen the soil so it won't blow around as much. Uh, but some areas probably just got sprinkles. So still watch for uh, blowing dust across especially central Illinois uh, before, you know, more of this rain uh, dampens things. Um, and uh, really anywhere across the state where there's uh, open fields. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's take a look here at Google Maps and see if we're still seeing any closures. Because before you could see it on the, uh, very clearly on the traffic map. Let's see here. All right, so yeah, you can see where 72 is still closed here. Uh, it was in between mile markers 80 to 87. Um, looks like right now, according to the map, again, not sure if another, uh, it's closed both ways, it looks like. Um, you can see people getting off here at the exit ramps. Um, but yeah, looks like 72 is still closed, uh, probably in both directions right now, just west of Springfield. Uh, we're seeing some we're seeing some delays here on uh, Route 78 uh, north of Jacksonville, and that was also apparently due to blowing dust. Um, still seeing some of those delays show up on the traffic map here. You can see those yellows and reds indicate slow traffic, so that's how you can kind of tell where we can have some weather issues going on. And then again, on Interstate 72 here, um, closed west of Springfield between mile markers 80 to 87 because of that blowing dust, which is not something we really expected or saw coming today. Uh, you never really know what's going to happen, I guess, um, when you have, you know, weather. Uh, but that's something, uh, there, I know there was another uh, incident last year with uh, blowing dust um, somewhere in central Illinois. I can't remember exactly where it was at. Uh, so hopefully there were no accidents uh, today. Hopefully they preemptively closed it, but I'm not quite sure. I haven't heard any reports of accidents, but again, not quite not too sure. Um, but looking here, we have, uh, this is a look at satellite imagery here. Uh, I'm going to turn on lightning flashes. 
so these, uh, so again, this is a look at satellite here. You can clearly see the low pressure curling up here over eastern Nebraska, about to cross into Iowa, and then this stuff, uh, these clouds that have overspread Illinois here, um, and then these uh, little blobs are lightning density. So where you see, you know, the, the brighter colors, that's where there's a lot of lightning. Uh, you can see some lightning across western Illinois, but not too much. Um, but most of it is with that second round that we were just looking at on radar there. Um, I'm going to take a look at, this is a overlaying instability here at the sur oh, that's not updating. I'm going to ignore that. Um, I'm going to zoom in a bit here and plot wind gusts so we can see. Because I know a lot of, uh, seen a lot of report of wind gusts over the last few hours. So we're getting reports uh, 40 in central Illinois near where we had that dust storm. Uh, a lot of 30s, near 30s across northern Illinois. Um, not seeing anything too high. I haven't seen anything over 40 to 45 as of right now in terms of wind gusts. You can, I don't know if you, how well you can see those little numbers, um, but those are wind gusts overlaid. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Let's overlay the radar. Uh, this is overlaying radar again. You can see that first round of showers and storms moving across uh, western and now eventually northern Illinois with some lighter to embedded moderate rain, but that second round of storms looks a lot nastier here. Um, and I'm going to overlay that lightning again not that one. Uh, these are the actual lightning flashes. Each little cross is a flash. Uh, so you can see a lot of lightning, especially with that second round of storms. The first one, it's been slow to catch up with. Uh, it's taken a while for that instability to make it further north here. It's, start, it's starting to now. You can see a few flashes near, again, that storm near Dwight produced a few in north central Illinois. But uh, again, not seeing anything imminent to worry, or not seeing anything to worry about over the next few hours across northern Illinois, unless you're in northwestern Illinois, of course. Uh, but the main severe threat is, again, across western Illinois as that second round of storms uh, ramps up. Uh, so let's take a look here at uh, one of our uh, short-term forecast models. It updates every hour. It gives us a pretty good idea of what might go on. Uh, so you can see in the next hour, it's a little bit behind, but you can see in the next few hours it takes that first rounds of showers and storms across northern Illinois. Not really doing too much with that, but again, that second... Uh, second round of storms over the Mississippi border here over the next few hours is what we have to watch. And then you can see how it kind of dissipates as it moves towards the I-39 corridor after that. Um, but again, that second round of storms across far western Illinois is what we're uh, most concerned about for uh, more significant severe. Uh, this first round of storms uh, that's going to move through northern Illinois over the next, you know, uh, probably between, uh, I would say, again, 6 to uh, 11 p.m. or so, it's going to be more general thunderstorms. might be some embedded hail or gusty winds. Still can't even rule out a tornado, um, but again, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna overlay instability here, um, where you have those brighter colors is where you have more instability. So that's where uh, you know you have a better risk of uh, stronger storms. And you can see how that's tied to the Mississippi River with that second round of storms, where um, a lot of it is uh, first of all it's uh, removed from the surface, so that means we, you know, that tornado threat would be very low. Uh, where you see this kind of uh, white hatched, uh, that means that it's uh, elevated instability. Um, <clears throat> so again, as that kind of you know moves, as we move into the nighttime, you can see how that instability kind of decreases altogether. Uh, still a little bit there as the front kind of moves through, um, but as that uh, second round gets closer to uh, I-39, it'll likely uh, kind of die out. You can see how these colors represent. Uh, it's it's just one of the one of the model tools that kind of shows where the best environment would be for uh, supercells and tornadoes. And you can see how that's tied to western Illinois near the Mississippi River uh, before it kind of moves east. But uh, again, into the early hours of the morning, we're not going to see uh, storms as uh, we're not going to see storms as there's not going to be um, instability present. There will, there will be a lot of wind shear still in the atmosphere, but uh, we're probably not going to see storms after, uh, you know, too many storms after midnight. It looks like they'll kind of weaken. Um, as we'll lose that, you know, heating that we have right now and that instability. So and then tomorrow morning the front pushes through and that'll be about the end of that. Um, so again, we'll look at another forecast model here that's updated uh, updated a few hours ago. You can see how it pushes that first round through in the evening hours. Again, this uh, exact screen grab is at 9 o'clock. So you can see how there's scattered showers and storms across northern Illinois, especially between, you know, 7 to 11, like I said. Um, some embedded severe possible, um, some, in, you know, be more on the isolated scale. Um, and then that second round of storms across western Illinois. Um, and then we'll have to watch how quickly it does dissipate as it moves into uh, parts of northern Illinois and eastern Illinois. Um, because that'll, you know, determine <clears throat> if it does, if some of that instability does hang on longer, uh, there could be, a, you know, a, a 
an, at least an isolated severe risk uh, further east into uh, you know east of I-39 later tonight. But right now we do think that that second round here that we're looking at, again, this is round one here across uh, parts of western and north central and northern Illinois. And then this is number two. You see this second round here looks a lot more potent. Uh, we have uh, three tornado warnings right now, and pretty much the whole thing is lined with severe thunderstorm warnings. I'm going to take this off here. Oh, that's bright. All right. So, again, so the second round here, uh, moving through Cedar Rapids right now, uh, this is more closely tied to the main cold front, so this has stronger uh, forcing with it. Uh, so that's why... Um, we're more worried about this one as it moves into western Illinois. You can see it's still about a county away from western Illinois. Um, you can see we're going to go right here. It's about uh, 25 to 30 miles away from the border here still, but this is looking pretty nasty right now, the second round. Um, and again, this is going to be more of a concern for western Illinois. It's moving pretty slowly, about 45 miles an hour, so not slow, uh, but not as quick as some of those other storms have been moving uh, to the northeast. Not seeing any reports of uh, actual, yeah, radar indicated, um, radar indicated, and then you can see here how these storms are kind of, uh, a little while ago they were, uh, it was more of a line, um, and now they're more, uh, discreet and separated. You can see how there's, you know, this one storm here, another one right here south of Washington, Iowa, this other one moving into Mount Pleasant, and then this other one here, uh, west of Cahoka, west of Cahoka, um, <coughs> excuse me, dry. Um, and then there's uh, three separate tornado warnings, actually four, but three different storms that are tornado warned along this line. And again, this is moving off to the northeast. So again, if you're in the Quad Cities area uh, or south of there, west of the west of Macomb uh, to Davenport, um, you want to pay very close attention to this second round of storms here. Um, I would not be surprised if just looking here, we're going to look at velocity too. I uh, can see these just looking here. Uh, there's this one here, actually, I wouldn't be surprised if they put a tornado warning on this one uh, that's going to move into the, near the Columbus Junction area here. Uh, that might affect the Muscatine area here in the next little bit as well. I wouldn't be shocked if they put out a tornado warning for the kind of box I outlined as well, even though there's not one right now. But you can see that there's several different tornado warnings, one that includes Iowa City. Um, not seeing any reports, again, of any tornadoes so far. Uh, these are all radar indicated. Um, but still, this line is uh, kind of starting to form into uh, what we were more concerned about, and that's why we put out that level 4 risk for western Illinois. Um, you can see how it's just moving off to the northeast, and now these more individual supercells are starting to develop you know, their own areas of rotation. So this could be an issue as it moves into western Illinois um, over the next few hours. So then again here switching a little further east here uh, we actually have a bit of an, a lot of lightning activity with these storms here across uh, near the Princeton area uh, just northeast of Peoria uh, you can see if I loop it here they've strengthened uh, nicely over the last you know half hour or so I uh, still th think that they're uh, elevated which means they don't pose any tornado risk it's more of a, a damaging wind um, and hail risk if that's again not any warnings or really anything on these right now uh, yeah no not even uh, you know watch out for gusty winds type uh, weather statement. Uh, the, you see this blue uh, outline here, the Storm Prediction, Prediction Center, I can't speak, they had to put this out a little while ago uh, for a possible watch issuance, a severe thunderstorm watch. They put it at 40%. They said severe potential may slowly increase over the next few hours into parts of northern and central Illinois. A watch may be needed at some point late this afternoon, but things remain uncertain. Uh, so again, they're not too sure either, and then they get technical here. Um, they're not too sure exactly how things will evolve either. Um, excuse me. But <clears throat> they are watching uh, parts of northern and central Illinois for a watch. And if they did issue, issue a watch for this other part of northern and central Illinois, there'd pretty much be a watch for the whole state at that point. Um, again, there is this severe watch for parts of southern and central Illinois, south of Springfield here, um, and then this tornado watch for western Illinois. Um, but something, again, I do want to note is that instability is increasing um, as we get later into the, into the day here. Uh, so the second round of storms here, I would watch it um, as it moves northeast over the next, you know, two to three hours or so. It'll probably continue to take some 
some time to actually move even though it looks like it's moving fast it'll probably take some time for it to make eastward progression uh, just because it's fighting some of that leftover drier air and uh, you know there's still that instability that is building into northern Illinois uh, but I would watch for some uh, maybe some embedded hail over the next couple hours here uh, maybe getting into DeKalb uh, Dixon especially and you can see a lot of lightning being detected uh, in these storms near Princeton right now and then again the uh, most uh, uh, significant severe risk that we're watching here is the second round that I've been talking about and uh, I'm gonna go to our outlook here for a moment if I can Let's see. Okay, so this is our severe outlook that we updated a few hours ago, and you can see we added a level four out of five to parts of western Illinois here, um, and this is where that second round is organizing right now. Um, you can see how the levels drop off as you move east. Uh, you can see how the Chicago area is in a level two out of five. Uh, that's more of a conditional, isolated risk, and that's kind of what we're still expecting. And then you can see how it increases as you get towards Rockford, a level three risk, and then again that level four into western Illinois. Um, and that's where you have that more uh, higher tornado risk. So this kind of displays where uh, we're most concerned about for these uh, uh, tornadic storms is really in this orange area here. Uh, the yellow is a little more uncertain because that's where these storms will probably begin to weaken uh, later tonight uh, from between, you know, 10 p.m. to midnight. And then this blue, or I'm sorry, this green area is where uh, we have just kind of a more isolated risk of scattered severe storms, uh, you know, probably more of a wind hail risk here. Uh, but again, this orange level four risk is where we're more concerned about a significant severe risk uh, this evening <clears throat> uh, over the next you know several hours really starting to ramp up here 5 p.m. and onwards uh, so again it decreases as you move east we're expecting the uh, the uh, stronger uh, uh, I guess uh, wind shear to reach uh, this green level 2 area very late tonight into the early hours of uh, Wednesday morning so there won't be uh, instability for anything to really fire so they'll probably pass quietly uh, late tonight in the Chicago area that second round um, it'll likely weaken somewhere in this yellow zone here uh, but again that's kind of where we're watching um, for you know these uh, severe uh, most severe storms and again looking at this uh, model here that updates you can see how it kind of uh, has the same idea it has this first round kind of scattered disorganized uh, you know some some stronger isolated uh, hail uh, cores possible and some gusty winds but the second round here where you see these black outlines that's where it's indicating those very uh, strong deep um, cores and even some rotation tracks and then again it weakens those fall apart as it reaches the I-39 corridor uh, this is about 11 p.m. or so uh, so you can see how around midnight maybe a little earlier that will probably fall apart and then it'll be a quiet night after that so the good news is is that we're not expecting you know a super loud uh, night like we have had a few nights uh, for parts of the state so far this year we're really not expecting anything quite like that um, we're expecting you know this first round to push through um, very, you know, it's kind of slowly making progress uh, east, uh, north, I'm sorry, north and eastward here. You can see the lightning associated with that first round here on satellite. Um, it'll continue to push northeast slowly, um, affect the uh, Chicago metro between really uh, 6 to 11 p.m., um, and then that'll dissipate and move east. And then the second round, again, we're very concerned for the uh, uh, tornado risk, damaging wind, and very large hail risk across uh, especially far western Illinois with that second round. And then we expect that to weaken as it gets towards the I-39 corridor, uh, probably around, you know, uh, 11 p.m. in the midnight, um, and that'll weaken um, as it moves east. Um, and again, we're not completely sure. We'll have to watch it closely, um, how it'll evolve, but we do expect that to weaken um, as it moves, you know, east of the I-39 corridor um, and affects, you know, er, in where it would affect the um, rest of Illinois. Um, so again, you know, where this tornado watches right now, this red outline box, uh, that's where we're most concerned for, you know, any longer tracked uh, Possible, you know, possibly more significant tornadoes, damaging wind risk, large hail, um, and then further east here, the severe risk is dissipates as you go east uh, in general. So uh, that's kind of what we're watching right now. And again, we have uh, still three tornado warnings in effect here. Uh, probably these southern storms are what we're going to be most concerned about. They're kind of, you know, still on their own right now. This one moving into Mount Pleasant. This one about to move into Argyle here near, near the Illinois-Iowa-Missouri border. Um, and it looks like I'm going to miss this just north west of gore and we had a funnel cloud reported uh, that was oh that was a, a while ago okay possible funnel cloud hard to tell so maybe uh, that was about it and that was about an hour ago probably with this storm moving into mount pleasant here 
um, if we get the other velocity going. Oh, yeah, you can see just south of Salem, Iowa here, we have a very strong uh, rotation couplet here. Again, this is a bit, uh, this radar is surveying a bit above the surface, so not quite sure, uh, you know, how, um, oh, let's see, am I getting a report? Well, it looks like we do have a tornado in one of these, it looks like. Um, it probably is this one right here. I'm not seeing it updated in the warning here. Um, let's see. Yep, okay, so there has been a tornado reported in this storm, it looks like, um, inside of the rain, rain wrapped just south of Salem, Iowa. Again, this is moving, uh, this is not in Illinois right now, this is still in Iowa. Uh, you can see the Mississippi River right here. Um, but again, this is moving really uh, northeast um, at probably about 45 miles an hour right now. Uh, it's going to, the first town it'll probably affect in Illinois will be uh, probably New Boston, maybe Keithsburg, uh, towards Joy, um, Alito eventually, and then eventually again the Quad Cities area is going to get in on this too um, if this storm holds up. Uh, but you can see how this is a very powerful uh, storm here. Both of these southern storms are. Again, this one right over Salem it does have a tornado reported uh, with it, it looks like. Um, I'm going to see if I can't see anything there. Um, but again, this is looking at velocity here. Um, so this shows us, you know, kind of the direction of the particles within a storm. And where you have, you know, these uh, this couplet here, you have these green and red colors bumping up against each other. Uh, kind of right on this county line here just south of Salem that's where you probably have that tornado right now moving right towards New London so if you are in New London or know anybody in New London Iowa um, or anywhere in this area let them know this is coming their way this is a confirmed tornado uh, with this storm here uh, let me see what county this is in again I'm not too familiar with my Iowa counties here Van Buren oh no Oh, well, looks like they haven't updated the warning. Okay, so I can't tell you right now. But again, this is just south of Salem, uh, just north of Houghton in Iowa here. Um, and again, we're uh, watching this as it moves towards the Illinois-Iowa border. Again, probably Keithsburg, Alito, um, and then eventually the Quad Cities area is going to be uh, in the line of this storm here, if I put it into motion. Um, and then again, the second storm here in uh, north, extreme northeastern Missouri over Cahoka uh, is moving northeast as well. And that'll probably be a problem for uh, parts of this western Illinois area here over the next few hours, too. Uh, so we're continuing to watch those. Again, um, as this approaches the border here, uh, we'll likely see that tornado risk uh, push into far western Illinois here. And then again, with this first round of storms that's ongoing um, across parts of northern and north central Illinois here, um, not seeing anything severe still. Again, might have maybe some small hail if this continues to ramp up. Um, definitely some lightning again, especially as you get further west. Uh, but generally things are quieter as you get further east, and that'll, you know, slowly change over the next several hours. Again, we really expect thunderstorm activity to kind of increase across uh, northern Illinois, especially uh, around, I would say, 6 to uh, 11 p.m. or so, maybe even 7 to 11 for this eastern half of the circle. Um, but we do, you know, we will see thunderstorms pretty much everywhere across northern Illinois. Uh, central Illinois coverage will be more spotty, as you can see it already is. Um, let's switch gears here. Um, again, where they issued this severe watch, as soon as they issued it, everything kind of just died out. Uh, the worst thing we've had is these uh, dust storm reports across uh, near Springfield here, where part of I-72 has been shut down. Um, that's the most significant uh, reports we've had out of any of these storms here. Uh, and these don't look like much near the St. Louis area here either. Uh, so not seeing anything to worry about across southern or central Illinois right now. Again, northern Illinois, not even really either at the moment. It's really western Illinois where we are most concerned as the second round is going to be pushing in shortly. Excuse me. Um, all right. So again, going out west here. Um, again, I saw someone asking about Galesburg. So if you're in Galesburg, you are kind of right on the cusp of the, or you're really right in this uh, area of better risk. Um, and if you see, here's Galesburg right here. Um, if I loop this here, you can see the southern storm is, uh, at the trajectory it's on right now, it might slide just just north of Galesburg, northwest. Um, but again, it's close enough where it'll be close. Um, and again, I'm not quite sure how much development we'll have. Actually, I should stop this here. You can see we have some new development here on the far southern edge, so definitely in Galesburg you want to pay very close attention to this, 
probably through about 7 to 8 o'clock. Uh, this is, you know, going to kind of slowly move. Whatever develops out of these storms here um, in eastern Missouri here might move towards Galesburg. But again, these two tornado worn storms, which are still southwest of, you know, uh, Galesburg right now, uh, they're probably going to slide towards the area of Monmouth. Uh, you definitely have a risk of being hit by the second storm uh, near Cahoka, Missouri right now. Again, not seeing uh, any reports from this storm here. We have seen a report from this storm moving into New London, Iowa right now. And now they did update the tornado warning. Uh, to observe. The confirmed tornado was located over Salem, or eight miles south of Mount Pleasant, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. Uh, so yes, tornado with that. Um, yeah, it looks like a pretty big tornado too. There's a couple storm spotters on that. Um, and again, this is moving towards uh, right towards New London. If you know anyone in New London, Iowa, uh, Mediapolis, Iowa, Oakville, again, eventually Keithsburg, Illinois, uh, right on the Illinois, uh, Miss or, I'm sorry, right on the Mississippi River there, Illinois, Iowa border. Uh, this storm is producing a tornado here moving into New London, uh, moving northeastward here. Uh, so that's what we're going to have to watch very closely here is that moves into north or moves into Illinois um, over the next you know hour or so. Um, and then again, the second tornado worn storm here over Cahoka, uh, I or Missouri, um, is also moving northeast towards the Monmouth area here, uh, west of Macomb, uh, probably even west of Galesburg and maybe just northwest of Galesburg. But again, there's more development possible on the southern edge of this second round here. Uh, that we're most concerned about. If I had to circle an area here that we're most concerned about with the second round, it would probably be like really, I mean, this is, you know, kind of generic, but right really where the tornado watch is right now um, is where we're watching. Um, let's see. Uh, see a question about northwest Indiana. Um, as these storms move east, there will be storms in northwest Indiana tonight, probably in the late evening hours. Uh, even, you know, maybe even some isolated ones early this evening. But the severe risk drops significantly as you move east, really, especially east of the Illinois-Indiana border. There's really not much other than a small hail risk. Um, and again, the severe risk is greatest here across western Illinois. Uh, with these, this uh, second round of storms. And again, there is a large tornado on the ground right now with this storm uh, that just moved over Salem, Iowa, towards New London, Iowa. And again, this is moving towards uh, Keithsburg, Illinois, eventually, and maybe even New Boston, Illinois, maybe Millersburg, Illinois. It's still, you know, about an hour away. Uh, but it is moving towards the Illinois-Iowa border here. Um, yeah, if you put it into motion here, you can see it's probably moving more towards New Boston as it has a little bit of that uh, still northeasterly motion. But a lot of lightning with that storm and very strong rotation that we've seen. If I, You can see that is just, that is really uh, not good. Uh, that's brought as strong as a rotation couplet as you can get here just coming out of Salem. Again, this is really moving right towards New London. Uh, probably, hopefully it'll go in between Mount Pleasant and New London, Iowa here and hit as little as possible. Uh, but you can see this couplet right here. That is uh, definitely where the tornado is. Um, and again, this is what is moving towards western Illinois right now and eventually the Quad Cities. Uh, some good news that I do want to point out if you're in the Quad Cities is that uh, it looks like here... Uh, if you kind of look closely, there is this little line right out ahead of this, these storms up to about this point. That is an outflow being pushed out of these storms, which is rain-cooled air that's being gushed out. Um, and that is good because it kind of weakens the storms, so that really cuts, undercuts the storms and lessens that tornado risk. Uh, so hopefully, you know, that if that continues, it would be more of a damaging wind risk into Davenport and the Quad Cities. But again, it's kind of, uh, we're really, these, it goes from a transition of damaging winds to uh, uh, a very uh, significant tornado risk here uh, with these southern two storms for sure. Um, and again, these other storms here further north could at any time re-strengthen and, you know, uh, get ahead of their outflow and uh, be, begin to rotate more. Um, but again, across northern Illinois, we really have a lot of general showers right now. Um, if, you, if you look here, it just kind of looks like a normal spring day with some rain. Uh, some embedded thunder right now south of I-80. Um, and again, some of these stronger storms here and coming up to Amboy might have some gusty winds, maybe even some small hail uh, coming up to Rochelle. Um, but again, other than that, just kind of scattered showers and a few storms across uh, northern and central Illinois. Uh, not much else going on other than that at this time. Um, but again, we are most concerned about the second round of storms here as it approaches the Mississippi border. Or, I'm sorry, the Mississippi River. The Illinois-Iowa uh, border, I should say. 
Um, let's see if this will actually, okay. So these, again, these little crosses are lightning strikes. You can see how there's a lot of lightning with that second round here across mostly Iowa and the northeastern Missouri right now. And some clearing in between that is allowing for some uh, instability to grow there. And again, this will continue to push northeast. Again, right now, uh, we're expecting kind of a, more of a general thunderstorm, uh, shower and thunderstorm activity across northern Illinois. Um, maybe some embedded severe weather, especially between, you know, 7 to 11 p.m., um, and mainly the form of some, you know, hail and damaging winds across northeastern Illinois. But again, that tornado risk is with that second round of storms that we're expecting across western Illinois, mainly. Uh, so again, the tornado risk uh, weakens as you head, or lessens as you head east of I-39. Um, but, you know, the second round of storms is what we're worried about here as it moves northeast. Um, kind of in this general direction here. And then again, as it moves east of I-39, we do expect it to weaken later tonight. Uh, but again, across northern Illinois right now, um, in east northeastern Illinois, just some general rain, uh, some wind, uh, some gusty winds being reported, uh, but really, and you know, some embedded thunder south of I-80, like I said right now, but not much else other than that. We'll continue to see this activity kind of increase in coverage over the next few hours, um, but we are uh, continuing to, you know, watch this pretty closely, um, especially across western Illinois. Um, this is kind of looking exactly what we kind of uh, feared like. Um, again, we really, this, we really weren't too worried about a significant severe risk across much of northeastern Illinois. Um, we've been talking about, you know, northwestern and western Illinois this whole time. Uh, for the most part, you know, more of an isolated severe risk across northeastern Illinois. Um, so don't be disappointed if, you know, you don't get a tornado in the Chicago area. We haven't really been expecting that at all this whole time. Um, but again, where we have that level four risk across far western Illinois, that's where we're most concerned is the second round moves across the Mississippi River in about, you know, 45 minutes or so um, into western Illinois. Um, into the Quad Cities area, and that's where we will have that tornado risk. And again, more of a general scattered shower thunderstorm risk across most of northern Illinois. Um, you know, thunder activity will gradually spread north and eastward here over the next few hours. Um, and then again, you might have some stronger embedded storms uh, around 7 to 11 across the Chicago area. Again, more of a wind, uh, isolated wind and hail risk across northern northeastern Illinois as opposed to a more significant tornado uh, damaging wind and very large hail risk across western Illinois here, especially northwestern Illinois. So again, um, we do have a large tornado being reported. I'm going to look real quick here. Again, this is still in Iowa right now, but this is what we're worried about. Uh, this is why we put a level four risk out for far western and northwestern Illinois. Um, wow. Okay, so Adam is on it, it looks like. I'm going to go to Adam's page here. Again, this is that level 4 risk here that we have. Give me one moment here. All right, sorry about that. Checking something real quick. Um, but again, I'm going to go to Adam's page here because he has a good a good uh, view of this tornado that I was just talking about. Oh, I just passed it. All right, so this is, again, near Houghton, Iowa. This is what Adam saw here. Uh, this is a very significant-looking tornado, again, very large um, and grungy. Um, you can see that dust being sucked into it. And again, that is with this storm right here, it looks like. Yeah, again, he intercepted it just south here, it looks like, near Houghton, and now it's moved towards Mount Union, and it's moved past New London. Uh, again, we had a very strong uh, velocity signal stare still on this, moving into New London, very strong. Probably still tornado on the ground, probably going to move right towards New London. Um, and again, this is going to cross the Mississippi River and move into Illinois here um, in the next hour or so. If we had to track it again, let's see what we have for movement here. Um, I would probably say, looks like right now it's kind of moving in this general direction. 
Uh, so it's about 30 miles out from the border. Uh, probably going to move towards uh, the New Boston to Eliza area. Might move towards the Quad Cities as well. Um, and again, it's very strong uh, tornado on the ground with this one. Again, going back here, this is what Adams uh, has captured. Um, and again, this is kind of what's moving towards far western Illinois, and this is why we have that level 4 risk in effect for far western Illinois. Um, I'm reading through here real quick. All right, so again, I am going to go back to our, or our severe risk here real quick. Sorry about that, having some technical problems here. So again, this is our severe risk here. You can see where we have that level four risk again, which is four out of five, uh, pretty high for us. We usually don't put those out. So that's why, uh, again, that's pretty much materializing right now with that uh, tornado I just put up on the screen. Um, and again, that is for, uh, captured by Adam here. I'm gonna go back to that if I could. Oh, and again, I was talking about that dust storm on I-72 earlier. Here's a really good picture of that. Uh, you can see you couldn't even see the car in front of you. That is pretty insane. Um, and that was dust again um, on I-72, kicked up by some of these thunderstorm winds. Um, or non-thunderstorm winds, I should say, out ahead of the thunderstorms as they developed. Um, so again, that was that dust there. Um, and then again, going back to uh, Adam here, because he got a very good shot of this tornado here. Again, this is, he took this over Houghton, Iowa. Um, he was near Reed Timmer as well. Um, and again, he, this is that storm that we're watching here. Again, right over New London right now. Um, and moving towards that, again, Keysburg to New Boston, Illinois here. Watch this very closely as this will be knocking on your door in about an hour or so. Uh, so moving, you know, pretty quickly here. Or, yeah, about 45 miles an hour off to the east. Or, I'm sorry, off to the northeast here. You can see a lot of lightning way out ahead of this. Very strong storm. Uh, moving towards Mediapolis, uh, Morning Sun, Iowa, Wapello maybe even. Um, really, you know, kind of in this general direction here. Um, as it eventually will cross into Illinois and approach the uh, general area of the Quad Cities. Uh, so again, this storm right here, this storm uh, right here that I was just talking about has produced this tornado that Adam got here on his uh, live stream, it looked like. Uh, so that is uh, pretty incredible. Uh, that is a pretty big tornado, obviously. Um, it looks like he was streaming it at the time, it appears. So pretty cool. Um, hopefully it was just in a field and not hitting anything. Um, it looks like here from this, this photo, at least, it was in a field. But again, it looks like uh, uh, it still is, you know, potentially producing a tornado as uh, it's continued to move off to the east here, um, or northeast, I should say. And I wouldn't. I bet they'll issue a new tornado warning for this here, probably to the Illinois border here any minute. Um, and then further north here again with the second round, it's these storms have kind of gusted out here northwest of Davenport, uh, east of Cedar Rapids. Uh, so that's good news um, because that'll lessen the tornado risk further north, at least north of ID. But again, these southern storms here are what we're going to have to watch very closely. This one again has produced large tornado um, here in southeastern Iowa within where we have a level four risk. Um, and then the environment really doesn't change much as this moves into, oh, you can see they just put out that tornado warning right there. Uh, so that is a new tornado warning to the Illinois-Iowa border, it appears. Yeah, so uh, 
again, again, this is observed an observed tornado um, with large hail. Weather spotters confirmed. Adam was one of those. You can see the picture I just put up. Uh, this is up to the Iowa border. So again, this is right up to uh, Keithsburg, New Boston. Uh, so really here, just south of Davenport, you really want to watch this closely um, if you're anywhere just south of Davenport. Um, this is going to cross the uh, Mississippi River here in the next hour or so, and this could be a a potentially bad tornado producer um, as it moves northeast so we're gonna have to watch that very closely here as it moves into the general direction of the quad cities um, so again this is what that storm has produced uh, so large tornado um, so watch that very closely if you know anybody here um, in this area again this new tornado warning is for uh, looks like uh, northern Des Moines County in southeastern Iowa and southeastern Louisa County in southeastern Iowa so there you go. And then again, this a couple new storms now, it looks like here, or a new storm near Cahoka that just developed. Again, there's still this tornado warning in effect. Um, haven't looked. Uh, looks like that tornado warning is about to expire, uh, but you can still see that area of rotation over Argyle, and then maybe a new one just south of Cahoka. So we'll have to watch those on the southern end very closely. And then this new storm over Atlanta, Missouri, had just developed. Um, and that'll also we'll have to watch as it moves northeast. But again, so pretty uh, uh, high. Not, I shouldn't say high, but we have a level four out of five risk uh, for these uh, this second round of storms across far western Illinois here in northwestern Illinois, kind of generally like this. Uh, I just showed it a bit ago. I'll go back to it before I get off here. And then again, though that risk decreases rather significantly and quickly as you head east here, where right now we just have general shower activity across much of uh, northern Illinois, um, and then some embedded thunderstorms south of I. -80 but nothing severe across um, anywhere across Illinois at this exact moment except for far northwestern Illinois here uh, where a severe thunderstorm warning has been issued for you know the Freeport Galena area or west of Freeport into the Galena area I meant to say for 60 mile an hour winds um, we'll have to watch here because it looks like to me that this will kind of start to fire here as it moves northeast and as it does so that'll probably be the main push of storms for the Chicago area around uh, 7 to 11 p.m. and again some embedded severe as possible mainly in the form of damaging winds and hail um, but can't rule anything out but it'll definitely be more isolated across northeastern Illinois uh, like we were saying uh, so again that is uh, this is a picture of that tornado that Adam captured in eastern Iowa here southeastern Iowa and again this is approaching the border quickly. So uh, this is a close, approaching the Illinois-Iowa border very quickly. So if you know anybody uh, just south of the Quad Cities or in the Quad Cities, you want to let them know about this right away. Um, and then again, further east, we have a general shower and embedded thunderstorm activity for now. Uh, we do expect, you know, more thunderstorms to form out of this uh, around the 7 to 10 p.m. time frame um, in the Chicago area. But again, severe risk will be more isolated, we think. Um, further east and that's kind of what we've been expecting so again this is a look at our severe risk here you can see that level four risk for western and northwestern Illinois and that's still intact uh, for the second round of storms uh, we think that second round will weaken somewhere in this yellow area here near the Peoria to Rockford area uh, around the 10 to midnight time frame and then this level two risk for much of central and uh, northern Illinois uh, the rest of central and northern or the rest of uh, central and uh, northeastern Illinois I mean to say uh, that's more of an isolated severe risk uh, this evening into tonight. Um, we expect activity to wane after midnight and it'll be a mostly quiet night outside of something isolated after that. Um, so, with all that being said, I am going to uh, hop off here at least briefly, um, take a little break. Oh, well, okay. So now we do have a tornado warning entering Illinois here. Um, so again, this is for uh, really right around the border here. Um, so this is for uh, northern Hancock County and west central Illinois, southwestern Henderson County, um, and then again some counties in Iowa and even Missouri. So this is a three state tornado warning here. Um, it looks like radar indicated right now. Again, if we look at velocity, it's kind of far from the radar. Definitely some rotation over Argyle and then maybe some here just west of, or west of Wayland right there. Uh, so again, they just put a tornado warning out here just barely poking into Illinois and this is what is going to, we're gonna be watching excuse me, over the next few hours. Um, and then again, this stronger couplet right here, moving towards uh, Morning Sun, Minneapolis, and eventually the border, that's where a large tornado has been reported and sighted, and that's what we're watching most closely.
Um, so again, I'm going to hop off here. Uh, we'll be back on shortly um, as this line, the second round, pushes into western Illinois, likely with tornadoes. Uh, so again, thanks for watching, and be sure to stay tuned, um, as this, especially across far western Illinois, as there is a level 4 out of 5 risk of severe storms. Again, going back here, level 4 out of 5 in this orange area, uh, dropping off as you head eastward towards Chicago to only a level 2 out of 5 in the Chicago area for more of an isolated uh, wind and hail risk this evening um, into tonight. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be back on later.